This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that you know how to use a key point snap, we can take a look at the remaining snap modes. To do this, it would be helpful to float the snap button bar. Go down to the snap icon, left click, and select the button bar. The button bar displays in the screen. And notice that the key point snap is the currently active snap, which simply means that it is available all the time until it's changed to something else. Now you might not be seeing all of the snaps displayed here, and if not, simply right click and you'll see a display of the available snap modes. The ones which are ticked are obviously on. So please turn all of them on with the exception of the through point snap and the point on snap. Both of those only work under very specific conditions, and in any case, you can use other methods to achieve the same results. Click on the second icon, which is the near snap point mode. I notice that both the near and the key point snaps are on at the same time. The key point is still the active snap, but the near snap is acting as an override to the key point snap. This applies for one operation only, after which the near snap mode will turn itself off. Start the line tool, click on the near snap mode, and move your cursor to the line. Notice there are an infinite number of snap points on the line. It's simply the nearest the cursor is to any part of the line. Same goes for a circle and any other element that's on your screen. Simply snap to any point on here and drag the line. Very straightforward, very simple. Note that the near snap mode has turned itself off and now the snap mode reverts back to key point. Now when you go to the line, you'll find the endpoint, midpoint, and endpoint again. I'll undo my line. Next snap mode is midpoint. Again, I'm overriding. And this time, the only position I can see on the line is the midpoint. No endpoints in this case. On the circle, we're only seeing one point, which is quite interesting. That's the point from which MicroStation drew the circle in the first place. Not immensely helpful. If I move to a shape, again, this is a continuous block. These are not individual lines. I'll pick up the midpoint of what would appear to be individual lines, even though they're not. Here's an arc, midpoint only. Here's a line string, midpoint of each segment of the string. And here's a curve, again, midpoint only. Text doesn't apply in this case. Move back to my line, right click to reset. Next mode is the center snap. Again, this is going to pick up the midpoint of a line, but no ends. It will pick up the center of a circle. It will pick up the center of a block if you move your cursor to the outside of the block. It will pick up the center of an arc. And in the case of a line string, it will pick up the geometric center of the line string and the geometric center of a curve. Text again is not significant. Next snap mode is the origin snap. On the line, this is the starting point of the line when I first drew it. So it's the origin point of the line, starting point. Circle, little trickier, it's this side this time. Again, that was a start point when I dragged the radius of the circle. On a block, it's the first data point that I used to draw the block. On an arc, it's the first arc endpoint, again, where I started to draw the arc. On the line string, it's the first point where I started the line string. And on the curve, again, it's the first start point of the curve. Text again is of no interest. Next one is the bisector snap. On the line, of course, it's the center. It's bisecting the line. On the curve, we're back to MicroStation's idea of the start point for the circle. On the shape, we're picking up the bottom right corner, which is halfway round the perimeter of the block from the starting point, which, of course, was the top left corner. 
On the arc, it'll be the center point. On the line string, it will be the center of the total length of the line string. What you're seeing here is not the center of that segment. It's the total length of the line string. On a curve, again, it's the center of the total length of the curve. Next one is intersection snap. And I need some more information before I can use that. My line tool is running. So let me just draw a line through here. Intersection snap. It will find that intersection. It will find that intersection. It'll find that intersection, but nothing else. Intersection, intersection. Drawing from that is simple. Left click and drag. And there's the line. Let me undo those two. Next step in line is the tangent snap. This works in two ways. If I run my cursor along the edge of the circle, this is essentially a nearest snap that's happening here. If I left click to accept a point, notice that I can drag my line around the circle and it remains tangent to the circle. It depends which side of the circle you drag the line. Tangent snap again. Snap to this side, and now the line is running in the opposite direction. Very straightforward. This can be used to snap to another element. I'd like to snap to a tangent on this arc. I need to activate the snap again, and that finds a tangent on the arc. I'll undo that, Control-Z. Try it this way now. Draw a line to the circle. And I'd like the line to be tangent to the circle from that start point. Start the snap. And it finds a tangent point. I'll undo that too. Next snap is the tangent point snap. Now in this case, when I move my cursor to the circle, notice I'm picking up key points. And that's because the key point snap is running in the background. That's affecting how the tangent point snap actually operates. So you could change the active snap to something else if necessary and overwrite again with the tangent point snap. Let's try it and see it this time. Let's select the half quadrant, left click and drag. And I have a tangent line from that point. Now it only works in that direction. You can't draw a line to an object and use the snap. Nothing happens at all. It doesn't snap to a tangent at all. Next snap is the perpendicular snap. And this is a very useful tool for drawing lines at right angles to an object. With the tool running, notice that as you run the cursor along, there is essentially a nearest snap happening. If I left click and drag, I'm dragging the line at 90 degrees to that line. Interestingly, I can go beyond the edge of the block. Quite useful. Undo that, Control Z. Try the perpendicular snap again. This time, start from a point outside an object. Set perpendicular snap on. Bring the line down and notice that the line will snap perpendicular to the nearest object. Undo that. Control Z. Next, try the perpendicular snap point. Start the snap mode. Go down to the block. I notice that I'm snapping to key points here again, and that's because key point is working in the background. If I accept a point, it will draw a line automatically at right angles to that corner. You cannot use this tool to go the opposite way. It won't work if you start a line. You can't select that particular snap mode. Only works in one direction. Control Z. And the last specific Snap mode is called the parallel snap. This is quite useful, actually. For example, let's take the line here. With the parallel snap running, select that line. It doesn't matter where you select it. Now, nothing seems to have happened. As soon as you go and data point elsewhere to start a new line, you'll find that that line is now constrained to be parallel to the first line. That's what the parallel snap does. Quite useful. Now the remaining three snap modes are called multi-snap one, two, and three. And these aren't actually snap modes in themselves, but a collection of snap modes. Go down to the 
snap icon and click on multi snaps. And again, we see multi snap one, two, and three. By default, multi snap one has snap modes of intersection, key point, and nearest pre programmed. Two has a different set, and three has a different set. Now you can change these at will. No reason to keep the default values necessarily. Depends what sort of operations you're doing. Now these are really very interesting and very useful. Let me show you what I mean. Let's leave them as they are for the moment. Keep in mind that Multisnap 1 has intersection, key point, and nearest in the modes. I'm going to draw an extra line on the screen and use Multisnap 1. It's now on. Now watch what happens when I bring my cursor to the line, to this line. I'm seeing an endpoint, which is the key point part of the snap. I'm seeing a continuous selection of near or nearest snaps until I get to the intersection where I now have an intersection snap. And if I come down carefully, it will lock on to the midpoint, which is the key point. Nearest all the way down to the end. That's the key point and back to an intersection. That's the intersection. Now see how useful this can be, again, depending on the operations that you're doing. Now the list of snap modes in the settings box can be changed quite easily in terms of the priority of the snap mode. In this case, intersection has first priority and then with descending priority as you go down the list. But I can click on intersection and move it down the list. I can move key point above now, key point has the priority if there are two points which are similar and may, in fact, contradict each other. Please experiment with the multi snaps. I think you'll find them extremely useful. Now you know how to use most of the snap modes. Please practice. Snapping is extremely important in drawing operations.